This might seem like a left field choice, but my favorite director of all time is actually Sergio Leone. It might seem a surprising pick, given that I hardly ever mention the guy on my channel or make videos on his films, but that's part of the enigma because I don't even know why he's my favorite director. I can't analyze his films or put a microscope to his methods. I've never even made a video on him because I wouldn't know what to say. His films just resonate with me. They just hit all the right marks and they are just so cool. Have you ever come across a filmmaker who just gets you, who knows which beats to hit and which buttons to push? Scorsese comes close, but the man for me is Sergio Leone. Once upon a time in the West, in America, for a few dollars more and the good, the bad and the ugly, perfection is how I would describe these films. Improvements are impossible, enhancements inconceivable, because they are quite simply without flaw and reach the stratosphere, the highest peak, the very best of what filmmaking is capable of. And then there's obviously also the excellent A Fistful of Dollars and A Fistful of Dynamite. The Good, the Bad and the Ugly was my first real gateway into cinema. I know I said Aliens was my first proper mature film I had seen, but later when my mum recommended to me this cowboy movie that was on TV, it showed me just what films are capable of just how good they can get, just how they can enthrall you, move you, tease you and tense you, all through simply a collection of sounds and images. Leone's works were perfectly complemented by the film composer Ennio Morricone, second to none in my opinion, whose mesmerising catalogue of film music really bested his work with Leone. The music just takes you away at times, it always achieves its goal, whether it's simmering under the radar to generate building tension like in Lee Van Cleef and Klaus Kinski's Duel in For A Few Dollars More, evoking sympathy and tears like in the conversation between Tuco and his brother in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. What a scene by the way, so much raw emotion packed into three minutes. Whether Morricone is quite simply delivering an epic smackdown over our ears, of which there are plenty of examples, Leone and Morricone are one of the best partnerships ever to grace the movie world. Sergio of course breathed life into a dying genre with his spaghetti westerns, and then gracefully drew the curtain on the genre with Once Upon a Time in the West. A fistful of dollars propelled him, Clint Eastwood and Morricone into stardom. At least it made them more well known and propelled Eastwood into stardom. An unofficial remake of Kurosawa's Yojimbo, Fistful is a little rough around the edges but the quality is on display for all to see. And Leone's remarkable talent which he would immediately perfect with his next film. The famous wide shots, the instant close-ups, the extras hand-picked for authenticity and characterization, the now legendary framing and shot composition, the cool, strong and silent protagonists, the iconic outfits, the music, the stories, the characters, the sense of manliness and bravado, honour and grittiness. Damn, there's so much to love with Leone. For a few dollars more, it's light years better than its predecessor, where clearly everyone involved had a better grasp of their craft. Morricone upped his game and innovatively used music that was specific to individual characters, something that would become very important in part of the story in Once Upon a Time in the West. Gian Maria Valente returned and Lee Van Cleef was thrown into the mix and each of the three main characters held their own against each other and a colourful cast of supporting characters in a brilliant story of revenge and greed. Eastwood and Van Cleef is an A-grade pairing of alpha male macho-ness and they both had great chemistry together. Having the main character in a western be a bounty hunter motivated solely by greed was unheard of for American audiences and so was the hyper-stylized violence and sadistic bad guys. The Good, the Bad and the Ugly was the culmination of the so-called Dollars trilogy or Man with No Name trilogy and it is an epic in every sense of the word and one that I've usually said is my favourite film of all time although this can flip-flop with a number of Leone pictures. The score became synonymous with westerns as a whole and the three-way duel which acts as the climax remains one of the most tense scenes in cinematic history. 
Eli Wallace's Tuco is the heart of the film, a bumbling, conniving bum who is shown to be quite a complex character eventually. The budget for this one was much bigger, and it's clear in the film's scope. But in spite of the film's big moments, it's the small ones that stay with you. Eastwood comforting a dying soldier, Tuco's confrontation with his brother, things like that really added to the film and gave it more heart. I heard that Leone wanted Charles Bronson or Henry Fonda for the lead in A Fistful of Dollars, but both turned it down. And subsequently, they turned down the next two movies. But by the time Leone began working on Once Upon a Time in the West, he was so popular they both agreed to be in it. And Leone utilised this by making Henry Fonda, one of America's most beloved actors, into a sadistic child murderer. I did a video on Fonda's character in the film, if you're interested, called Frank Death of the Gunslinger. But he's just one of the few detailed and highly complex characters in this slow, delicate opera whose lengthy silence is sparingly shattered by lightning fast violence. Leone doubles down on his trademarks in order to present this love letter to the West. Who can forget the close up of Bronson's tear speckled eyes in the climatic duel? It's a gorgeous picture, visual poetry. Leone directed a few scenes of the uneven but entertaining slapstick My Name is Nobody and then made a picture called Fistful of Dynamite that he signed on to only reluctantly as there had been behind the scenes issues and he didn't want to make the film anyway. This is considered something of a misfire for Leone and though it's true it doesn't reach the heights of the films around it and has some bizarre scenes it is still a great picture, featuring Rod Steiger doing his best Tuco impression and an Irish James Colburn with a twinkle in his eye. It's a political western, focused on the Mexican Revolution. There are a few shortcomings, such as the messy pacing, but this film boasts some brilliant set pieces and shows that even when Leone wasn't interested, his creative spark was always flicked on, the on switch. Leone's final film, his sprawling gangster epic Once Upon a Time in America is a crime film that I feel is in contention to being the best gangster movie of all time. For sure, it's a toss-up between Coppola's film, Scorsese's Goodfellas, and this. Goodfellas had not been made yet, so America's main encounter with the mob world was Coppola's movies, highly romanticised worlds where the criminals had ethics and codes. Leone's pet project, which had been something he apparently wanted to make since the early 60s, had its protagonists be extremely vile people, killers, traitors and rapists. The main character, played by Robert De Niro, commits some horrific acts throughout the film, and the film is made all the more poignant and powerful by having the character reach his old age and revisit the place and people whom he subjected a lot of his cruel acts onto. A bit like Scorsese's upcoming The Irishman, really. Once Upon a Time in America is a crime saga spanning decades and flip-flops between time periods, showing the heyday of De Niro's gang, the joyous times in their youth when they all met, and during the senior years, after which rifts and deaths in the relationships made things go sour. Despite the extreme violence, I found the film very moving, especially through its themes of nostalgia, Regret, friendship, love, redemption, and self-examination. Morricone delivered a knockout score, one that can take you away to distant memories. As revered as the film is today, it was completely torn apart by critics upon release in 1984. Leone had originally envisioned two three-hour-long films, and then one four-and-a-half-hour-long film, and when this was rejected, then finally a 3 hour and 49 minute version, which he felt he was unable to further trim down as it would compromise the story. American distributors cut the film down further to 139 minutes and recut the film into chronological order without Leone's consent. And he was devastated when this version was wide released and it was reviled as nonsensical crap. Critics who had seen both versions condemned the changes made to the film and the European version is often held as one of the best gangster films of all time. In fact, 
Some cite the American version as the worst film of 1984 and the European version as the best film of the decade. Go figure, even after 20 years could they not see Leone knew what he was doing. The handling of the film was so crap that due to paperwork issues, Morricone's score was not even eligible for an Oscar. It's really irritating how much they messed this film up. There's a longer version of the movie as well that exists if you're interested. I think it was released in 2012, which contains so-called lost scenes. But with that version, the scenes that they entered, the quality doesn't match with the rest of the film and it's quite noticeable, kind of taking you out of the film. Undoubtedly, one of the best films never made, stopped only by Leon's sudden death five years after the release of Once Upon a Time in America, the Italian wanted to adapt the book, The 900 Days, The Siege of Leningrad, into a war epic simply titled Leningrad. The plot would focus on an American photographer, played by Robert De Niro, who becomes trapped in Russia as the Germans begin bombing the city. He ends up falling in love and impregnating a native woman, and the two attempt to survive the siege and evade the Russian secret police. Leone had convinced Ennio Morricone to do the music, and apparently he had actually scored some of it, but it was never recorded and released. And Leone had set the budget at a staggering $100 million, and was set to begin filming in 1990 before he died, two days before shooting was scheduled. It's unfortunate, as Leone's creative talent and eye for epic cinema would surely have made this project one of the all-time greats.